What that's telling us is money is coming out of those mega caps and some of it is going into Bitcoin as a safety hedge, believe it or not. This is very good news for Bitcoin. Hello everyone, Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist of VerifiedInvesting.com, discusses the recent tech sell-off, Bitcoin, Ethereum, gold, and oil. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Former United States President and current Republican candidate Donald Trump announced his intent to make the United States the crypto capital of the world if elected in November. After taking the stage an hour late, Trump addressed the crowd at the Bitcoin 2024 conference in Nashville, Tennessee. Trump said that he had great respect for the Bitcoin community, adding that this is like the steel industry when it was young. That's, and then you're, and you're drawing a good point here. So number one is that human emotion doesn't change, right? So when you were bullish and and you know euphoric in 2021 and markets were going up, it seemed like markets could never go down. We saw GameStop run. We saw all the meme stocks and all that craziness go on. That bullish greed is exactly what has driven up these mega caps. And in fact, GameStop did run again just a month or two ago, right? So we've seen that same sort of thing. And so human nature is that way and that it tends to repeat greed and fear, greed and fear fear, it just happens at different levels on the charts. And so I want to just point that out. The other thing is, is that you're right. In 2022, the fear was, oh my goodness, the Fed is going to tighten too much and cause a recession. We're now going to be entering a point is, oh my goodness, the Fed's not cutting enough we're going to have a hard landing and a recession. And it's just, it's ultimately the same end game of that recession that's going to cause a slowdown in profit growth that will drive down these valuations of these crazy mega caps. So ultimately, my question is, and I guess some people's question is, uh, looking at this chart, do the charts tell you whether or not we're going to get another 38 or 37 percent correction? I mean, does it give you a sense of magnitude? Yeah. So so what you do is you you do go by the parallel, right? The parallel generally from the high end, eventually you find your way to the low end. And you can see this on so many charts out there. These parallels are everywhere. But in general, yeah. So you'll have stopping points, right? The previous 2021 high will be a major technical support. The market will get a bounce there most likely. Uh, you'll see a lot of bulls come out of the woodwork and saying, okay, now we're starting our next leg up. But in general, if we go historically to these channels, it does end up with a continued move down after after a bounce, and we probably do go back to the low end of the channel. By the way, exactly one year ago, last July, was also when we had a huge drop in the tech sector, well, stocks overall. Now, that yeah. just could just be a coincidence, but I'm not sure if there's a seasonality aspect at play. Yeah, you know, in the, the the cycle action is interesting with the year, but I also think it's seasonality a little bit as well. Um, you get into this kind of lull summer light volume environment where markets are very skittish because one little thing pops up and there's not enough volume because a lot of the institutions are on vacation, right? Their, their big traders are away. And you can look at the volume on the markets. It's been incredibly light. In fact, I can throw up my volume on the bottom of this chart. And what we can clearly see is that the volume was decreasing more and more as we were he heading back. Back down. And so if I draw a trend line here, if we look back at when we were at the lows, like if you go back to the lows of 2022, this was the volume trend and we've seen it continue to go lower, which tells you back here, institutions were buying quite a bit. Over here, when volume gets this light and you get this last bull run, it tells you institutions are not buying that that run. And that, again, to me, is a warning signal. It's almost the same as with gold, right? What was the warning signal that I said gold was going to likely break out on? Not technical. Technicals were different. But fundamentals, I said, guys, the, the central banks around the world are buying gold like crazy. That's a no-brainer. This is the same thing, just in reverse. The institutions are not buying and the markets are making new all-time highs. This is a warning sign. Could you do something else for us, Gareth? Could you draw a trend line starting from October 2023? Um, there was a trough then. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and let's just see what happens if we make that parallel now. Um, yeah. So it looks like if we if we start there, I mean, I'm just picking a point. Uh, but if we start there, it looks like the corrections already been fully priced in, right? 
So yes, you're right in, in, in that we haven't hit the trend line yet. So technically we probably yeah. still should, but it's only a little bit lower. We're talking around 454. In addition, you have a secondary level right in here that's just below that. So see this flat top right here? Sure. That's going to be major technical support. You can see how it hit right here and then bounced up and made that high. So I would expect a technical bounce. Many people will come out and say, hey, the, 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 the correction is over. I just don't buy that based on what we're seeing. And remember, David, a mm -hmm. couple things to go over is number one, remember what I said is that that it's it's when the Fed starts cutting rates and we're likely going to get one in September that the markets really start turning down. And number two, it's when the yield curve uninverts that we get the recession. And yeah. we're starting to get the yield curve getting close to uninversion. And that is another warning sign for me as a technical trader. So, so my question is uh, how you decide to pick the bottom of the trend line. What's your thought process? Well, so you mean you mean the bottom of the market or where I put the trend line? Yeah, so, so yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, where, so the, the trend line the trend guide line, yeah. as as you as you learn how to draw trend lines, the trend lines will guide you to where to draw it. It's it has to make sense. And so mm -hmm. what we do is we see that the market had a, a move up here and it kind of had a flat top. You had all these highs and then it pulled back. And so what that's telling you is there was a lot of resistance there. And then notice how here the market broke out above it and then retraced right to that level before making its push to new all time highs. That's telling you that that level is significant. So if the chart is telling me it's significant, I have to pay attention to it. The same thing with this upsloping trend line. There's, it's not a coincidence that the market is coming back into that line and you're connecting the two major pivots over the last year uh, at the lows, they coordinate right to that level. And so this area, again, 450 to 454 on the QQQ will be massive support and it should yield a bounce. Gareth, uh, cryptos, Ethereum had a huge move downward this week. And I don't know if this surprised you or not. I, I know the ETH ETF launch, which happened this week, was supposed to be bullish news uh, for a lot of ETH investors. And up till this week, people were very excited about that. Uh, what happened? Why did it go the opposite way as some people have expected? So, so the ETH ETF, yes, it launched. Um, it launched probably at the worst time when the stock market and the mega cap tech were collapsing lower. Um, and I think that was really the issue here. So what we saw was day one, it had about 100 million in inflows. But on day two, what we saw is the stock market was cratering that day. I think it was the biggest down day in the NASDAQ since 2022. And it just created a scenario where a lot of these investors that bought the ETF, which were probably stock market investors, because you have to do that in a brokerage account, they ended up selling it in fear. And then there was $108 million in outflows. And the problem with that is that once you see that and, and investors start saying, wow, there was more outflows than inflows, it creates a scenario where fear comes in and that dropped the price down quite dramatically. Now, again, where does it go from here? I think a lot of things will be all about what the stock market does. If the stock market stabilizes, if we see upside on risk assets, then Ethereum probably does well as the ETF will see inflows. But I do think that there is some concern here that the altcoins inclusive of Ethereum are much more tightly tied to Apple, to NVIDIA, to these other names. And if they do start to fall, then you have to think the altcoins could be headed lower. Okay. Uh, this ETH and Bitcoin divergence, again, it's making alligator jaws <laughs> like yeah. our, like the very uh, visual graphic we just painted for the NASDAQ versus the Russell. What's happening right now in the ETH, ETH versus Bitcoin space? Um, yeah. How you're let me, let me show you something really interesting. So Bitcoin is slowly maturing into a digital gold, a store of safety. And right. what I mean by that is when did Bitcoin bottom out over here? It was on July 5th. So July 5th was the low. Since then, it's generally been tracking higher. Let's go to Microsoft's chart. When did Microsoft put in its high? Its all-time high was on July 5th. So what does that tell us? And you can, by the way, you can look at Meta Platform, same thing. A lot of the mega caps, the same thing. The day they topped was the day Bitcoin bottomed. And as they've fallen, Bitcoin has seen a resurgence. What that's telling us is money is coming out of those mega caps, and some of it is going into Bitcoin as a safety hedge, believe it or not. This is very good news for Bitcoin over the longer term, folks. Really, really good news. Doesn't mean it won't have fluctuations. Even today, we saw up and down a thousand points on Bitcoin, but it is a very bullish sign to see that when there's fear in the stock market, in the mega caps, money does go into Bitcoin. Bitcoin is um, 
it's hovering around what is it right now it's about sixty seven thousand dollars let's talk about bitcoin now it mm -hmm. did breach above seventy thousand not too long ago and then it went down it's just really having a really hard time breaching above 75k um tell us what's tell us what the uh the charts are telling us yeah, so what, what Bitcoin is doing right now is actually what's called digestion of the recent move. So you had this huge move up going back to October of 2023. We were basically trading in the 20,000 range. We ripped up a few pullbacks along the way, but we went to 73, 8, 74,000. That is a massive move up. I mean, we're talking about from 20,000 to 74, you know, basically a 3x plus. Now, the kicker here is that when moves like that occur, things have to have what's called bullish consolidation or digestion. Great analogy would be a marathon runner. A marathon runner runs 26.5 miles or 26 miles and change. And what it is, what they have to do, can they run another marathon? No, they have to refuel, they have to rest, then they can run another marathon. So if we just draw out what has happened here on the chart, we had a big move up. And then essentially what you get is this sideways chop of digestion. And usually what it forms is this kind of parallel channel, which is exactly what Bitcoin is doing here. And then eventually you likely will break to the upside. So if we look at this, the yeah. eventual move should be up. And this is exactly what we're seeing here in the Bitcoin chart. If we draw our trend lines in here, it looks very similar to what we're seeing here. Big up move, and then sideways consolidation. So really, if you look at this on a big time frame, this is actually bullish consolidation on Bitcoin. And I would fully expect it to make a move to the upside maybe in the next couple months. That okay, well, we're, we're going to come back to that. You know, I was just looking at uh, on my screen, I have the charts open as well. Um, I'm finding the last time it's looked like this. And what I found was 2019. If you if you don't mind going back to 2019 for us, just zooming in from 2019 to 2021. Um, so if you yeah, if you take a look at this big run up in 2019, I know you have to zoom in for that. Yep, there we go. Yeah, this big run up in 2019. Why would you have your cursor? That consolidation pattern right there from the top looks a lot like what is happening, kind of like what it's happening now. Had a big drop in 2020 and then it went back up. Yep. Right. So I, I would I would I think your analysis is spot on, David. Absolutely agree. So you had the big move up here. This was a massive move from about three thousand dollars all the way to fourteen thousand. It then had to digest that. I mean, what is that? A five X almost a five X. It had to digest that move. The more it moves, the more it has to digest. So it digested for multiple years. And then look at what happened. It broke out, had a little check back, and then off to the races. And I think, again, in general, that's likely what we're doing. Now, obviously, if something crazy happens in the crypto markets, if regulation, I mean, there's always the what ifs. But in general, the charts are what tell us the truth. I mean, listen, generally, I tell investors, don't believe what I'm saying. Go to the charts and, and look at the data. It's all about the data. And when you look at the data, you're right, dead on. That looks like what's going on right here, this type of pattern formation, yeah. which leads to a breakout. Hold up. Did, did Gareth Soloway just turn bullish on Bitcoin? Is that my well, headline right there? <laughs> I mean, because let's keep in mind when it broke 30,000, I said, hey, listen, all right, now it's broken above a major level. It should go back to the, the all time highs. Yeah. Um, but remember, I'm a trader. So I'll be long and short 100 times in the next couple months. Um, and, and again, you know, that's just the nature of how I'm how I trade is that I go long and short. Uh, but again, if you're a hodler, I think you just keep hodling. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.